<clears throat> well, praise the Lord, everybody. It is a wonderful Tuesday afternoon, November 28, 2017. Welcome to another segment of In the Moment with the Apostle. I'm chilling at the crib, kind of laid back. Uh, today, we want to share with you a very candid uh, subject <clears throat> I think will be a blessing to you, especially uh, I believe it'll do something uh, powerful for your coming holiday celebrations. Um, I'm going to give us just a few more minutes for my brothers and sisters to join me. Why don't you click like, say hello to me so I'll know you're there. Uh, invite somebody. Uh, swipe and share, as they call it. Click and share. Uh, I think today you'll be tremendously blessed with the information we're going to share with you out of the Word of God. Uh, it's always a blessing and a privilege and an honor to come before you in the moment with the Apostle and uh, speak a word of life into your hearts mind to provoke your way of thinking and your emotional status and strengthen your heart in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know about you and where you are right now, but in this season already, it is cold. It's interesting in Texas how um, we can be cold one day and then three or four days we're hot. And then here comes another cold drop. And so <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, we thank God. No complaints. Amen. Just thanksgiving. Just praise. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? I hope you had a good one. I hope you and your families had good food and fun and festivities and got to laugh and enjoy. I kind of did something I normally don't do. I opted out of all the dinner invites. I kind of chilled at the crib, ate, watched some sports you know i watch football and uh some movies and whatnot and kind of rested kind of stayed back kind of spent time reading the word and praying as normal and thanking god but i hope you and your families had a great thanksgiving i also uh on the norm i went and uh had the pleasure to help serve the communities at the food banks and at the churches and at the schools and had chance to share the word of God with the those coming and got a call today by a deacon and said I got some good reviews so I appreciate that amen we give God glory we give him praise well let's take one more minute and then we're gonna take off running amen again uh, you might want to invite some of your friends some of your loved ones to just come and Hang out with us a little bit for a little while. Uh, I know they're all very busy people and usually much too busy to hang out with us, but nevertheless, we invite them anyway. Amen. We always want to invite our friends and loved ones. Always. Always want to invite our friends. Because you know friends, you know how they are. They'll say, man, you didn't even invite me. And uh, the door is always open. Uh, I'm ready for the Christmas holiday season. What about you? Are you ready for Christmas holiday season? I am. I tell you, uh, just thinking about uh, how fast time is moving. Time is running past us, isn't it? I mean, time is really running past us. We, I mean, man, already it's no, the end of November. It's about to be December. It's going to be Christmas already. And before you know it, it's the new year again. Isn't that something? I mean, time is running by us. It's amazing how fast the days are moving. And with time moving so fast, that tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ is soon to come. Isn't that right? The Lord is definitely soon to come. We don't want to take anything for granted. We know he'll soon return for us. Amen. Looking for that church without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. You want to know what I'm doing? 
uh, I'm following through as I promised in the past. And I'm inviting a couple of friends to come hang out with us. Uh, that's what I'm doing. So no one to fuss at me anymore and say, you didn't invite me. I didn't know you were doing Facebook Live. So they still might not. <laughs> they still might not come, not because they don't want to, but most of them, most of my friends I know are very busy. So that's one of the main reasons I don't bother because they're very bu busy people. Uh, I have uh, the ones I call my friends. They're much, so much bigger than me. The man of speaking, uh, the great people, successful people, uh, prominent people, and I try to uh, watch their lives and see how I can do better in mine. Amen. Well, I think it's time for us to get moving. Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. There are times I don't understand, but I believe it's turning around for me. I've had some struggles and some disappointments. There are times I feel so alone. Some of my friends, I call them so-called friends, they, they let me down, but still I believe it's turning around for me, around for me, around for me, around for me. It's turning around for me. I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. Change is coming for me. If I hold on and believe, there's no reason to doubt. I know God is working it out. Oh, yes, he is. It's turning around for me. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's turning around for me. Ooh. And it won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. It's turning around for me, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's turning around for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It, things are turning around for you. You know we're at the close of a day, the close of a season. Glory to God. The close of a month. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in your heart and in your mind, soul, and strength. I want you to believe through Jesus Christ that you're at the end of that hard place. You're at the end of that weak place. And if you've been in a defeated place, you're at the end of a defeated place. I want you to take courage, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, and know that you're at that mm. end of those difficulties that appear they won't give. There always are changing seasons. So in this life, there's always going to be rain. There's always going to be sunshine. There's always going to be hills and valleys, mountains. There's always going to be beautiful plains. You'll always have high days and low days. You'll always have easy days and tough days. You'll always have to deal with the rude, rough parts, pardon me, or rude people. But you'll also have good days. And seasons change in life to develop us and make us whole. If there were not the multitude of changing seasons, there would be no wholeness in us because each season 
is relevant and necessary to grow properly. Today I have a candid word I want to share with us. Uh, we're going to Paul's letter, his second letter to the church of Corinth. That's uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Uh, as we go over it, you'll notice we'll touch a couple of familiar passages of scriptures, some very familiar. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm going to begin reading, and you're hearing it, verse number 10. And you do know I'm reading from the King James translation of the Holy Bible. That's 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, beginning at verse number 10. And we do give reverence to God, who's the head of our life, his darling son, Jesus the Christ, who gave himself and his life and his blood, his dignity, everything, gave up his all for us, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He died and shed his own precious blood and descended into the lower parts, defeated death, hell, and the grave. After preaching to those spirits in prison, he led captivity captive, received gifts for men, even the rebellious, that God might be their God and he could give them those gifts. And uh, on the third day, we know he rose again uh, by the Father through the blood of the everlasting covenant, having all power in the heavens and in the earth, in the spirit well in the natural world given into his hand. He ascended to the right hand of the throne of God. The Father didn't forget about you and I, but sent the promise, who, which is the gift and in the person of the Holy Ghost, to indwell us and to rest upon us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Higher than a Mosia Modiasi. Yes, somebody just got a word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for the Savior Jesus, and of course, for the Holy Ghost, our keeper, who's walking in the earth realm and should be walking in you and I who profess to be Christians. Amen. All righty. Uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse 10 through 21. <clears throat> the word of the Lord reads, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body. We all must appear, that word, all. Keep that in mind. According to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So we've got to give an account, people of God, for our good deeds as well as our bad deeds. Oh, God, let your blood cover all of our bad. Amen. Verse 11 says, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But that's the reason why we do these Facebook lives and we do food banks and we preach and evangelize and we visit hospitals and nursing homes and VAs and critical care units and jails and max prisons and homeless shelters, uh, preach at various churches, different denominations. It doesn't matter to us. We do it because we know the terror of the law. So we do it to persuade men to turn to Jesus. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. I hope you think about me sometime. I hope in the course of your week, you think about Apostle Donald Ray Thompson. I hope that in the process of your prayer life, you think about Apostle Donald Ray Thompson. And I hope sometime when you receive your abundance, whether it be money or food, or whatever, I hope you think about Apostle Donald Ray Thompson. Verse 12 says, for we commend not ourselves again unto you. Doing Facebook Live, we're not trying to make a name for ourselves. We're not trying to make ourselves popular or famous. But give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. You know you can feel my love. You can feel my sincerity. You can feel my sincerity of faith, my genuineness of faith in Christ Jesus. So you can boast and brag. You can say, hey, that's my apostle. You can say, that's my bishop. You can say, that's my brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 13 says, for whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Hallelujah. You know, somebody think we're a little bit too deep, too radical when we talk about incredible, miraculous things the Lord has done. Verse 14 says, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all are dead. Hallelujah, Jesus died 
for us, that means that if he died for us, then we're all dead to sin. Amen. Uh, verse number 15 says that he died for all, that they which live would henceforth likewise live unto themselves, pardon me, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So we should be living unto the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one that died for us. Amen. Amen. Verse 16 says, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. This is our key verse for today. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, verse 18 says, who hath reconciled unto us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, final verse 21. For he hath made him, Jesus Christ, or Jesus the Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let us say praise the Lord. I want to look one more time at our key verse, which is verse number 16. This is a vital verse for you and I, my beloved brothers and sisters in this day and time that are called Christian. I promise you, this is gonna load your repertoire of spiritual warfare, spiritual uh, uh, weapons of war in such a mighty way. I'm telling you, you're getting ready to win the world over. Verse 16 says, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, we know him no more. Let us say praise the Lord. I want to take time now to share with you from the thought. Jesus the Christ is not color coded. That's what we want to talk about today for the next 15 minutes. Jesus the Christ is not color coded yes i said it twice i think i need to say it one more time for the holy ghost jesus the christ is not color coded let us pray eternal god our heavenly father who brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant you heavenly father whose name is jehovah hallelujah you who name is Yahweh, you're El Shaddai, Yahshua, Joshua, you're Adonai, you're that I am that I am. You're him who revealed yourself to Moses and the children of Israel when you brought them out of captivity as the Lord God, Jehovah. You who made and created the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them, the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, every fish that moveth in the sea, everything even microscopically innumerable like the sands of the sea, the stars in the sky innumerable. You made all the spirit world, the angelic hosts, and gave them each a name, and you know them. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come before you today asking you to illuminate us and bless us with your word and with your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father, in Oh, God, empower us, hallelujah, to give glory and praise to your wonderful name in the coming season. God, make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Make a miracle for us. Break chains off of our lives and off of our minds and off of our thinking, off of our ways, off of our witness, off of our relationships, off of our fellowships, off of our church attendance, Father, off of our money, off of our finances. God, give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Give us skill. Make us savvy in the holy name of Jesus. God, let your word be glorified and let it have free course today and be illuminating and, and let it be empowering. Let it be educating. Let it be uh, strengthening and let it be empowering and enhancing today. And 
Father, touch our hearing ear. Stretch your hand now in the midst of us and bind and rebuke the devil. Every diabolical, demonic force and spirit or persuasion or influence or interference. Or, or, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hi, yeah. Mind the OC. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Drive Satan out from the midst of us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now speak to us, Holy Ghost. Speak to our hearts. Come into my mouth and my tongue that no flesh shall speak, but your glory and your presence will be revealed. It's in that wonderful and holy name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, we pray. We call it done by faith. Let every heart say thank God. Amen. Amen. Let us say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Master. King of Kings. Lord of Lord, there's absolutely nobody like the Lord. Isn't that right? Nobody like the Lord. Nobody. He's the fairest among 10,000. All the sons of men are not like him. All those in the heaven, none like him. There's obviously none beneath the earth. Hallelujah. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody. Nobody like him. Nobody like him, no matter how mighty, how awesome. No matter how many great stories you've heard about great people who have done great things, no matter how rich somebody is, it doesn't matter. They can't compare to Jesus. Uh, the owner of Amazon has been declared the richest man in the world. He's worth over $100 billion. Yet he could not compare to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all the money in the world could never calculate and resignate, ha, mandiosi, nor elevate, hallelujah, to the level of worth in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Neither what he did in you and I. Matter of fact, Jesus said that our soul is worth more than the world. No wonder he told us what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Well, that's enough introduction. Let's go into the word of God. We're talking today from the candid subject, Jesus the Christ is not color-coded. What are we talking about here today? Too often there's an argument. To me, I think it's a silly argument over what nationality is Jesus. There's this outrage that Michelangelo painted this picture of this blue-eyed hippie with this Caucasian skin, uh, with this very pious look on his face um unfortunately somebody else backdoored michelangelo and made their portrait of a guy blue-eyed long hair hippie or brown eyes and red skin and so there's this public outrage and the next thing you know somebody else made a portrait of this guy with this dark black african-american skin and this short hair because there's a passage of scripture that said his hair was like wool and people have taken those depictions and created an argument that really can't help you one way or the other. If you discover that he was black as the tires on the car, what is that going to do? If we discovered he was white as a sheet of paper, what would that do? If we discovered he was red as a candy apple, what would that do? If we discovered he was light brown paper sack tan like caramel candy. What would that do? That's not even the point, neither the premise, huh, mindy OC, for why Christ Jesus came. Yeah, I know it settles an argument and makes the white supremacist know that you've been uh, exposed, that you lied about the Savior. But I need us to know today that the Lord Jesus the Christ is not color coded and i'm going to show you that in the word of god now what is important about this message when you understand this it will make such a great difference in all of your areas of relationship it'll make a difference when you understand jesus is not color coded it'll make a difference within your relationship with god the father when you understand that jesus the christ is not color coded it will make a difference in your relationship with God the Father, but it will also make a difference with your relationship to other Christians. When you understand that Jesus the Christ, my beloved brothers and sisters, are, is not color-coded, it will make all the difference in the world 
in your relationship to God the Father, your relationship with other Christians, and your relationship with the world, especially in your witnessing. Let's look at verse number 16 in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Verse 16, the Bible says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Now, I want to break that bread with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. The Apostle Paul was alluding here that we should really go after getting to know one another. 1 Thessalonians 5.12 tells us to know those who labor among us. Many people spend so much time being driven or taken, if you will, by a platform performance, we never get to know the individuals that are behind the scene or the individual that's behind the performance. Paul lets us know here that we need not know people just by their presentation or just by what we can only see. Oh, she's good looking and automatically we call her a diamond. Well, just because she's very attractive don't make her a dime. Oh, he's good looking. Oh my God. What, just because he's good looking don't make him uh, that incredible hunk of a man. You need to get to know the person. Martin Luther King was here. He would tell you the content of their character, not the color of their skin. He said, we know, we know no man after the flesh. You need to know the spirit of a man. You know the spirit of a man or the spirit of a woman when they open their mouth because the Bible teaches, pardon me, that out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, pardon me, the mouth speaks. So when they open their mouth and you get to know individuals, you discover who they really are from the inside out. You start to discover their values. You discover their way of thinking. You discover their level of faith. You discover their belief system. You discover uh, their uh, focus, their outlook on life. You, If you spend enough time and you can get enough quality time in, you get close enough, you'll discover their likes and dislikes. You'll discover their favorite color. You need to know people. And you need to know them not just by what they look. You need to know them not by just what they drive. You need to know them not just by what clothes they wear. You need to know them not by the good smelling cologne or perfume they wear. You need to know them not because she's wearing Karen or Duneberg or Michael Coors purse. You need to know them not just because he got on Versace or some uh, expensive suit. You need to know them not because they live in the house on the hill. You need to know them not because they work at a certain job. You need to know them by who's on the inside of them, what's on the inside of them. And then he says, yeah, though we know, have known Christ after the flesh. You've known Christ after the flesh. We've all known him in this age secondarily. Uh, Paul and those before him knew Christ in the flesh because they got to be around him walking about in his humanity. But we know him after the depictions of the word of God and after the depiction of Hollywood and et cetera. We've known Christ after the flesh. We, we've we understood that he was born of a virgin, come through 42 generations to be born of that virgin. We've known him how he went to the Jews and his he called him his own and his own received him not. We know him how the word of God says God sent him to uh, Bethlehem and, and sent him out of Bethlehem, out of the manger, so he could be represented as the Lamb of God and then went into Nazareth so he could say, behold, I called my son to come out of Nazareth. He's called Jesus of Nazareth, etc., etc., etc. You've known him after the flesh. But listen to me, my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters. Jesus the Christ is not color code. If you get caught up in all of the things relevant to his flesh life, now the things in his flesh life that he did are vitally important. But if you are not careful, these things will only gender strife. They'll become divisive behavior or divisive conversation. They'll become a seed of discord. You'll mishandle the word of truth because the word of God concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is never intended to be for diabolical arguing and bickering and fighting about, especially not over what race he was born into, or what nationality, or how dark, or how light was his skin tone, what color was his eyes, was his hair shorter, was it long, you know, the depiction by Michelangelo, he must have had long hair because they called him Jesus of Nazareth, that lets us know Michelangelo didn't read his Bible, 
because if he had read his Bible, just like a lot of his believers, his followers, they would have known that prophetically he was sent to Nazareth with his surrogate mother and his uh, adopted father, Joseph, to protect him from Herod's onslaught of every child two years and beneath. And he was called from Nazareth that it might be fulfilled as it was spoken through the prophets. Behold, he shall be called a Nazarene. Hallelujah. So when you haven't studied the word of God, you get into all those unnecessary arguments. And at the end of the argument, nobody can get saved. At the end of an argument, nobody can get healed. At the end of an argument, nobody can get delivered. At the end of the argument, nobody can really have peace. At the end of the argument, nobody can really get any joy. At an end of an argument, there's hardly any good accomplishment. Because if you're a person that has a good conscience, even when you win an argument, you'll still be concerned about that other person's feelings. Unless you're just ruthless, low down and dirty, then you don't care. That's why the word of God is not about an argument. It's about a message. Glory to God. So we have known Christ after the flesh. We know him because the gospel message in his fullness is about the life and times of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not only about the death, burial, and resurrection. It's about the whole life and times of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which includes his resurrection, ascension to the Father, and him sending the promise, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And his return soon, one day. So here we know Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. In other words, remember Jesus when he met the woman at the, at the well of Jacob in John chapter number four, the woman began to be carnal or uh, uh, intellectual, if you will, with Jesus. She began to pull her religious rank, her religious uh, uh, prowess, uh, her, her religious connection. My father worshiped in those mountains. He was high up in the church. I know about you Jews, y'all down there in religion, y'all distant from us. That's what we have too much of, and arguing over the color of God's son's skin makes some act high-minded, and it also causes some to be very distant from the body. And the Bible teaches us that we should not be separated one from another, but we should love one another and be joined together because we are. If we've really been born again, it means we've been born from above, born by the Spirit of God. And if you've been born by the Spirit of God, the Bible said we are already fitly joined together. Hallelujah. In one body. Because when we're born again, the Spirit of God baptizes us, immerses us into the body of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 13 teaches us. So we don't know Christ after the flesh. Christ made it clear to the woman at Jacob's well. He said, woman, it's not about your high-mindedness in the mountaintop. It's not about your risque. It's not about Jerusalem being distant from one another, being so separated from the rest of the world. You know, some people are so separated. They don't watch TV. They don't watch sports. They don't watch movies. They don't listen to music. They don't laugh. They don't eat meat. They don't go to the mall. They don't go to a restaurant. They wouldn't dare be caught at a, a dance hall. They wouldn't dare uh, be caught uh, watching a, a movie. They wouldn't dare uh, touch a, 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 a Scrabble game board. They wouldn't dare play a video game. You know, everything's the devil. They're distant from everybody. And they think that that's what sanctification is about. No, sanctification is about me having a, a, a separate way of living from worldliness, from my old sinful practices. So I'm separated and I'm separated not because I'm being bougie or I'm being arrogant or think I'm above you, but my sanctification of separation means that I've set apart my hope toward God in Christ Jesus. And so I'm pulling off the old man with his deeds that are created in lust, and I'm taking on and, and acting upon the new man, which is created in Christ Jesus, our Lord, hallelujah, after the glory of his presence, hallelujah, and in the great hope of his return, hallelujah, amen, glory to God. So he says, we don't know Christ any longer after the flesh, hereby we should know him no more. 
we should be looking at him from the spirit. Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, woman, the hour is coming and now is that you won't worship God in those mountains nor in Jerusalem. You think what you're doing because you can brag on what you do, how much tithe you give and how faithful you being and how much money you give and how faithful you being and what you not do and you don't do this and you don't do that and you don't drink this and you don't smoke that and, and you don't go here and you don't go there and you won't say this and you won't say that and you've been boasting and bragging about yourself but jesus made it clear to that woman at the well he said listen it's not about your high mountain worship or service and it's not about your distant way away jerusalem service he said but the time is coming and now he is that the Father is searching, the all-seeing, all-knowing, all-hearing, all-understanding God is searching, my God, today for those who are willing to worship him in spirit and in truth. My God, today, I call it a diamond. Jesus, the Father, the Holy Ghost, they're looking for a diamond. Elohim is looking for diamonds in the rough. Diamonds in the rough. This world is like a coal mine. This dark world we live in is like uh, the bottom of the mountains, the insides of a cave. This world is like rough, rocky places. This world is full of hardships and heartaches and pains and hard stares and hard looks and, and hard issues. This world, my God, today is full of hard heartedness. And this world we live in today, my beloved brothers and sisters, is full of hard tests and trials and tribulation. This world that we live in, my beloved brothers and sisters, is full of heartache and pain and frustration and aggravation and irritation. This world we live in, my God, today are full of mind-boggling, mind-blowing situations and circumstances that arise every day. This world, the devil is loose in the land and murder is taking place here and there and everywhere. And my God, today, this world is full of child molestation and child uh, kidnapping and child murder and, and, and child abortions. And this world that we live in today, my beloved brothers and sisters, is so filled, my God, today, with racial hatred and racial division and, 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 and my God, today, and, and uh, uh, arrogance and pride and high-mindedness. This world is so filled with injustice and wrongdoing, and this world is filled with jealousy and envy and strife, and, 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 and this world is so filled with so many horrific things, and God is looking for the diamonds that is in the rough. The diamonds that is in that rough are we who, my God, today worship the Father in spirit and in truth. My God, today, if that's you, you ought to give God a hand praise. Hallelujah, for making you a diamond in the rough. If you're that individual, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, that know you worship God not according to your flesh, not according to what color you think he is. When you worship God, not because you're a Baptist, not because you're Church of God in Christ, not because you're apostolic faith, not because you're full gospel, not because you're full gospel Baptist, not because you're Assemblies of God, not because you're Church of God, Church of the Living God, not because you're Christ Holy Sanctified, not because you're Catholic, not because you're Lutheran, not because you're Presbyterian, not because you're Southern Baptist, not because you're Primitive Baptist, not because you're Baptist, not because you're Missionary Baptist, not because... My God, today you're holiness, not because you're Pentecostals of the world, not because you're United Pentecostal, not because you're African Methodist Episcopal, not because you're Christian Methodist Episcopal, not because you're uh, a United Methodist Episcopal, not because you're this or you're that, but because you want to worship and know the Father, the maker and creator of the heavens and earth, him that gave his son because he so loved us. My God, today when you worship in God in spirit and in truth, you just want to know the God of the Holy Bible. You're a diamond in the rough in the midst of this crooked world. My beloved brothers and sisters, I've got to close. But listen, whatever you do, don't you go arguing with nobody during these seasons about what color Jesus' skin was. That is totally irrelevant to his purpose and his premise. Matter of fact, that puts a haze, a cloud, a dark, dim gloom over anybody's opportunity or possibility to see the Lord Jesus Christ in us, and to see how the Savior gave his life on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood and died. We need to stop arguing over where Jesus was white, Jesus was black, and Jesus was brown skinned, and Jesus was Asian, and Jesus was Jewish, and Jesus was this. He never came for such a reason. He's not color coded. 
Jesus never came so that people could call him a Jew. That's not why he came. At the time when the Lord dispensed himself into the belly of Mary the Virgin, the Jews were the only nation that looked to what they called the unknown God. You'll find that as Paul was passing through Athens and he saw inscribed in a stone, which is a prophetic uh, uh, application they didn't even know was prophetic, inscribed in a stone to the unknown God. Hallelujah. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And it's in Christ Jesus we come to know the true God, the Father. So when they inscribed in that stone to the unknown God, this was a prophetic work that God caused a man to do that didn't even know why he was moved to engrave it in a stone. And they would go to this rock, and even though their intent initially was idolatrous ignorance, yet it was prophetic in that Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. The stone hewed out of the mountain. Hallelujah, his father. Jesus, the Lamb of God, hallelujah, is the rock and the testimony of God the Father in Matthew chapter 16 about him that he sent to Peter, saying, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'm going to build my church. It's talking about that testimony of God the Father about the Son, which the whole body of Christ, hallelujah, is founded upon. Jesus is that rock. So we don't know Christ after the flesh. We're not trying to know him after the flesh. We're not trying to win an argument whether he was dark skin or brown skin or light skin or white skin or Caucasian skin or red skin or Mexican skin or Japanese skin. We're not trying to win that argument. We're not trying to know him after the flesh. We're not trying to know whether he wore sandals or boots or a skirt or a robe or a, a tunic or a, a tassel or a cassock. Or, we're, we're not trying to find out whether his hair was long or short or, or, or trimmed or box cut or a uh, kid and play, a uh, fade. We're not trying to figure out whether his eyes were blue or green or hazel or brown or black pupil. We're not trying to figure out, glory to God, whether he had all his teeth or some of his teeth or missing teeth or crooked teeth. We're not trying to find out if his tongue was pink or purple or, or, or uh, light color. We're not trying to figure out whether he had short fingers or long fingers or skinny fingers or wide fingers. We're not trying to see if he had fingernails or no nails at all. We're not trying to see if he had long toes or big feet or, or short feet. We're not trying to figure out, glory to God, if he was muscular or skinny or frowny or, or, or wormy or whippy. We, we, all of those things are foolery. They gender strife, my beloved brothers and sisters. We're trying to make you understand today. Let me close. Verse 17 said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let all the arguments about Jesus' color be your old things. Somebody come to you from now on talking about what color Jesus was. Tell them that's old news. Tell them that's an old argument. Tell them you into the new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You into the true and in the new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Watch it. Verse 18 says, all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, that same Jesus, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. This is teaching us today how to win souls in these coming seasons. This is teaching us how to, how to comfort those who are lonely in this season. This is teaching us how to embrace those and strengthen those who are missing mama because she died, or missing daddy because she died, he died, pardon me, or missing their daughter or son because they died, or missing grandmother, grandpa, or missing my husband or my wife or, or, or my best friend, my, my, my brother, sister, whatever. Uh, uh, this is teaching us how to comfort people who are struggling or going through uh, they know they won't have a big Christmas with money. It's not even about that Christmas tree. It's about that Calvary tree. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said it's not about the Christmas tree. It's about the Calvary tree. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're trying to see if somebody's going to put something under the tree for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God put some on the tree for you. Hallelujah. So that you might put some under the tree for him. What you going to put under the tree? You going to put yourself under the tree, under that cross. Hallelujah. At the foot of the cross. Glory to God. Where I first saw the light and the cares of my life and the burden of my heart rolled away. Because it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Instead of worrying about who put some under the Christmas tree for you, you ought to worry, be concerned about what you're going to put under the Christmas tree. Oh, I get it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is what the Holy Ghost said to me. If you want to give God the greatest Christmas ever, 
Hallelujah. He said, why don't you put some under the tree of Calvary for him? Bring some lost souls. Hallelujah. God said, why don't you gather up the Christmas tree for him and bring them and put them under the Calvary tree? Bring many souls. Hallelujah. Bring them red, black, yellow, and brown. Hallelujah. My God today, bring souls and put them under the tree, under the cross, that, that Calvary tree. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bring many souls, hallelujah, and gather them, hallelujah, at the foot of the cross. Abba, yonder to my soul, so that the blood of the everlasting covenant can wash them and make them white as snow, so that they can have the gift of eternal life. Hallelujah, the gift of life and eternal life in twain. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because when they come under the, the Calvary tree, that cross, that Calvary cross, hallelujah, Thank you, Jesus. They receive two gifts in one. They receive the gift of life and life more abundantly, and they receive the gift of eternal life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus, the Christ, is not color-coded. It's not color-coded. He is not color-coded. Let us no longer be color-coded. Let us not look at people don't stereotype every man you see that's white. Every man that you see that's white don't hate black people. Every man that you see that's white don't look at you with the N-word in the back of his mind. Every man that you see that is white skin don't hate you. And every man you see that is black is not dumb and low down, ghetto, fabulous, and, and ignorant, and, and, and slow learning, and, and poor, and broke, and disgusted, and, and hate white people. That's not the truth. They're not volatile. They're not poor dads and poor husbands and all that old stereotypical stuff. Let us no longer know people after the flesh, after fleshly things, but after the spirit. Jesus the Christ is not color-coded. God bless you. God keep you. That's my time. Jesus, 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 there is something about his name master savior jesus like the fragrance after the rain jesus whoa jesus Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and kingdom they shall all pass away. But there's something about his name, Jesus. Whoa, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about his name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, whoa, Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms they shall all pass away but there's something about there is something about 
there is something about his name hallelujah glory to god that's my time jesus the christ is not color coded i don't know about you but i'm going into the new with a new mind hallelujah with a new focus with a new outlook with a new determination with a new understanding that's clear it's not new it might be new to us but it's not new because it's always been in the word of god jesus the christ is not color coded they that worship the lord must worship him in spirit and spirit has no color and in truth god bless you god keep you remember if you understand this it'll better your relationship with god it'll better your relationship with other christians and it'll better your relationship with the world, even in your witnessing. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. We know God is due in process of changing situations, circumstances, and things for our sake, for our good, for our better. And the kingdom's word is agape.